on July 24th, 2022, China launched the Long March 5 rocket, their super heavy rocket, to the Chinese space station, and they delivered a science module to that station. Now, that was successful. They got the science module in there, and they also have a habitat module, so people can go in and out of the science module and do what they need to do with their science. But the Long March 5 rocket, that's the important thing here. China has a history of wrecking these rocket boosters back down to Earth. And the reason why they do this is because the Long March 5 rocket is not equipped with any sort of propulsion to put it back on course to land in a appropriate place. So the Long March 5 rocket, there's nothing, there's no way for them to control this rocket on its way back down to Earth. SpaceX, we know. The, the uh, Falcon 9 rockets, they have the boost back burn. They have the booster that lands out in the ocean on a ship. And that's totally safe. Other rockets, other boosters, they have navigation systems. They have other ways to reorient the rocket when it's in space to come down someplace safe. We don't want these rocket boosters to be landing over land where people are, where there are cities anything like that so we want them to land on the ocean where they sink gracefully and that's it and then it's done but china doesn't do that china has a long march 5 rocket there's no propulsion systems on it and therefore they can't really control where these things come down they have a basic idea of when they will come down and where they'll come down but the earth's atmosphere has other plans sometimes sometimes the earth's atmosphere is thicker sometimes it's thinner so the booster may be coming back at a certain trajectory, but if the booster is up against the atmosphere like this, it'll slow down more. Or if the boosters like this comes down more straight, it'll be going a little bit faster and at a different trajectory. So there's parts of these boosters that I want to tell you about. There's small tanks, medium tanks, large tanks, and the outer tube, if you will, of the booster and also the engines of the boosters. The engines, the small and the medium tanks are the things that we have to worry about with these boosters. These things will more than likely survive the catastrophic um, heat that's happening in the atmosphere as they re-enter. So everything on the outside will burn up more than likely. There's tubes, there's pipes, there's electronics in these things, and all of those will burn up as well. So those are no problem, but these tanks, the small tank, the medium tank, and these engines, the engines are actually built to withstand substantial heat because they're the things that get hot and those are the things that launch the rocket. So they have to be able to withstand this heat. So coming back in the atmosphere, super hot, extremely hot. The insulation, nothing of that matter. It, they don't matter. Like that stuff doesn't matter. It all burns away. But the rocket engine those you know the medium and the small tanks those things could survive 5.5 to 9 tons of this 22.5 ton rocket booster could survive uh it's way back through the atmosphere and down to earth so that being said this booster actually has come back down to earth and i'm going to show you some cool stuff about that right now. So this happened today, a little bit earlier today. And this is a, a thread from Twitter, from Twitter, uh, Delta V, Delta underscore V, put all these, compiled all these videos together of this rocket booster re-entering the atmosphere. The uh, CZ-5B, look at this, re-entering the atmosphere. This is a video from Nasri Suleiman. I'm sorry about the pronunciation, uh, but as you can see, parts of this booster re-entered the atmosphere earlier today at about two-ish o'clock Eastern time, uh, 7.30, 2022. And here you can see another one, but there's really not much to see. You can kind of see it in the, in, the, uh, uh, in the atmosphere up there. You can see this one here. There's a train, which is, this is a neat one. You can see it through the clouds so that, you know, it's really bright. If you can see it through the clouds coming back through the atmosphere, these people got a very interesting look at a wild phenomenon. And this is dangerous. 
these things coming back down are dangerous. And I'll tell you in just a moment where these things landed. This one's not so good. This is just a, a one little one little dot that flies across the screen. But you can also see, hey, this is like a meteor. You know, it just comes straight across. Here's another one from XADOO. And as you can see, these small pieces, the big pieces, they are all burning up at the same time. So parts of these things are going to be going faster than other pieces. Other pieces are going to be bigger. They're going to survive a little bit longer and they're going to be able to uh, land on actual land and make it all the way down to the earth as opposed to burning up in the atmosphere. And here's another one. A huge train of these things flew across the sky. And this is H.H .H on Twitter. This is H.H. Uh, .H. I don't know. Yeah, this is the, uh, who is this? Come on, mouse over. You can do it. It didn't do it. But this is my favorite one down at the bottom here. From Hanif. Don't know how to say the name. Don't want to butcher it. So this is a beautiful one because you can see in the foreground, you can see some architecture. You can see some humanity. And in the background, you see this booster flying over. So this all happened earlier today. Now, it was, uh, it was said to have possibly going to land near Brunei, possibly land somewhere in the Indian Sea, somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. Um, but we do know where it actually landed. So after hours, three hours of tracking this this morning, we came to the conclusion after the Space Force and a few other, um, a few other sources have witnessed this. Palawan is the place that it landed. So let me show you this. Right off the coast of Palawan, on the east coast of Palawan, right about here, actually. So I'm going to show you this on the map, but right there is where it landed. Palawan is right here. And I'm not very uh, very familiar with this, but the Sulu Sea near the Philippines. And yeah, it's in the middle of nowhere where it kind of landed. But this whole strip of land, there's people that live on the strip of land. And look at how close it was to that land. Now, if any of these parts were to be at any different angle than what they were at, the the booster could be coming in at a slighter, more vertical angle. Um, it could have possibly landed where people live, where people vacation. This is a beautiful, beautiful place. And I don't know why they don't have some sort of booster on the booster to get it back properly. So these kind of things don't actually happen because we don't want people getting hurt. We don't want property getting hurt. We don't want people to be in danger. You want people to not worry about this and they don't want to have to worry about the booster coming back in and burning up, you know, where they live. You know, somebody said in chat earlier today, Hey, what if it lands in my backyard? I'm thinking like, that's probably bad. So the, the, the debris is about four sedans landed outside of Palawan. So on the east coast of Palawan. So the fact that they did this super irresponsible. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what you think, because I'm I'm frustrated by this. I think everybody else is frustrated by this, and I want to know what you think about it, too. So thank you very much for watching. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel and also like the video. That's about it. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.